Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today I'm reviewing what may well set the standard for portable solar panels in the future. It's the Powerfilm Lightsaver Max. They currently have an Indiegogo campaign that's running for the next week or so. So if you want to support this campaign, if you have an interest in the product afterwards, you can check the link in the description. But first let's talk about why it's so special. Alright, so as some of you know, I did a review on a similar product several months ago. That was a scaled down version of this one. This one is a much larger version with a much higher capacity battery pack. I'll talk about the specs shortly. I just want to say first off though that Powerfilm, in spite of doing this Indiegogo campaign funding, they've been around for 30 years. They've done stuff for the military, for of civilian use they have a lot of experience in the industry and of course they're based out of the United States so all the manufacturing is done here so if you're somebody who supports jobs not being outsourced overseas and you support high wages here in North America and you want to help maintain the industrial sector that we still have then I would encourage you to support this campaign and I understand that this may be out of a lot of people's price range uh, due to the economic situation that we find ourselves in right now. However, the only way to turn the tide is to start supporting small American businesses like this one who do have a lot of integrity with what they do and would rather ensure that their product is quality made instead of shipping it overseas where they can't have the same level of quality control. All right, so let's quickly talk about the specs of what this thing is. Basically, it's a thin film amorphous silicon solar panel what that means is that although it functions slightly less efficiently in full sunlight than a monocrystalline panel there's going to be numerous advantage over your standard monocrystalline panel that you can buy right now off of amazon for fairly cheap but there's a reason why those are cheap and this is not cheap one of the main reasons why is that any monocrystalline panel if a part of it is damaged or if there's shade covering a part of it if there's an object covering a part of it or if it's in low light conditions, it's not gonna function nearly as well as these thin film panels do. In addition, these are far more lightweight, they're more robust, they're more versatile in terms of how you can set them up. And probably the most unique feature of this panel in particular is that it has a battery pack attached to the panel. So it's always charging that battery pack when it's rolled out. You don't actually charge your devices directly from the panel itself. All right, so let's quickly talk about the specs. Now the dimensions, as you can see here, 13.5 inches, it will easily fit into a day pack. I show it here with my Rush 24 pack. It can easily fit on the side. It can fit inside the pack. It almost fits width wise. So if you had a larger pack like the Rush 72 or an equivalent backpack like that, it's likely gonna fit sideways as well. The length of it when unrolled is about three feet. Now the battery capacity is 15,600 milliamps, which is fairly decent by modern standards. It's not the biggest battery pack I've reviewed, but it's uh, it will suffice. It runs on Samsung ICR 18650 lithium ion cells. I'm guessing maybe five, possibly six of them are contained within the housing. It has dual 2.5 amp USB outputs. It also has a 12 volt output. Now the input is actually a USB-C. So you would charge this via USB-C, which is the newest type of USB cable available. So this is good to go for many years to come or you can also charge it via 12 volt adapter. Also has a built-in 660 lumen flashlight on it, which is very good. And obviously that flashlight's gonna be able to run for a long, long time, seeing as there's such a large battery pack attached to it. Now, one of the distinguishing aspects of this panel over others like it is the higher efficiency and conversion rates. So Lightsaver boasts, and I say boast because I have not yet had the chance to test this myself. I wanted to get this review out so that you could support the campaign if you wanted to in time. But they claim that their solar to battery efficiency and battery to whatever electronic device you're using efficiency is significantly higher. I'm gonna post the image here which shows the comparisons. Now there is a two year warranty on it. The panel itself has an ingress protection rating of IP67. That means that you can probably dunk it in water and it's gonna be okay. 
up to a certain depth. Now the battery housing itself is only IP55 I believe but I am told that there is going to be some waterproof end caps which should significantly increase the ingress protection rating on the battery pack. Now as you can see here once it rolls up there's a bit of extra material to cover the panel itself. I'm not sure if it's a Cordera or nylon but it's a fairly hardy material anyways and there's some grommets on there if you want to hang this up. One of the great things about this design is that there's just so many different ways you can hang it up and because the battery has a significant amount of weight to it uh, you can put this on a fence, you can rest it on you know a chair, uh, it, it basically can support itself if it's propped up on something and due to the flexible nature of it it can conform to the contours of whatever you put it on so if you want to put it on a tent if you want to wrap it around a backpack as you see here that works also a couple things that i think could be improved with the design is to have a better led display i would like to see a numerical display i'm not a big fan of the four digit or the type of battery indicator that they have on here. I just don't feel that it's able to communicate accurately how much battery power is left in the battery pack itself. Also, while I think that the flashlight's a cool feature, I don't think it's essential. I think that space could be used more effectively by maybe expanding the capacity even a little bit more. Indeed, I'm looking forward to some end caps on there so that in low light conditions, if there was a slight drizzle, you wouldn't have to worry about leaving this out in the rain. So my first impressions are that this is a very convenient and very practical solar system. Most of the solar systems that I've seen, especially the flat monocrystalline ones, for one, if it's flat, that can be a good thing for packing, but you gotta remember that there's a risk of damaging those if you were to set them down or if your bag was not packed properly. And this, because it has that tubular form factor, can really occupy that space in your pack that you might not have been able to utilize any other way. And just the ability to roll it out and be instantly charging, not have to hook up any wires whatsoever. Once this thing's unrolled, it's instantly collecting power. You don't have to turn it on. So I think that is one of the main reasons why this is going to be successful. Now, the panel itself, I'm guessing, is probably about 10 watts. I'm just speculating on that based on size comparison between that and a, one of their 30 watt panels. So PowerFoam claims that the panel provided is big enough to charge the battery pack between six to eight hours of good sunlight. To have the ability to charge a 15,000 milliamp battery pack in six to eight hours of good sunlight is very impressive for a panel this size. And a lot of that I'm assuming is due to the efficiency at which the sun's light is put into the battery thanks to all the factory integration of the components compared to buying a solar panel, getting a battery pack and just hooking it up. This is going to be far more efficient. Now, like I say, I haven't tested this yet because I wanted to get this video out so that if you wanted to go and support the campaign, you could. I will do more rigorous testing and I actually am going to be reviewing another PowerFilm panel in the future. And in that video, I will share with you any updates, conclusions, problems that I might have incurred with the product because I know somebody's going to say, well, why didn't you test it out before you did the show and tell? Well, you know, like I said, you use your own discretion. Supporting these crowdfunding campaigns is always going to be risky. I can tell you right now, before PowerFilm ever sent me products to review, I was a customer many, many years before the relationship I have with them now. So I'm pretty confident in the quality of the product. And bear in mind, this is still a prototype. So there's going to be a lot of positive changes made to this design and i'm assuming that they'll constantly be refining the technology as time goes on as well so once again go check out that campaign i'll post a link in the description thanks for watching canadian prepper out check out the canadian preppers network blog an excellent resource for survivalists and preppers